If you still need confirmation that our leaders have no idea what the heck they're doing in these ridiculous wars overseas, now you have it. According to Reuters, quote, U.S. officials disclosed to Reuters on Sunday that the United States has decided to allow airstrikes to help defend against any attack on the U.S. trained Syrian rebels. Even if the attackers come from forces loyal to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, U.S. President Barack Obama has long sought to avoid any direct U.S. military confrontation with Assad's forces, focusing instead on the battle against the Islamic State. So, that means that we are now fighting on both sides of this conflict. We're fighting ISIS, of course. We've dropped thousands of bombs on them, and we've had zero progress. ISIS is just as strong today as it was at the start of this campaign. They're still getting plenty of oil revenue. They're expanding into different countries, and they're replenishing just as many fighters as they lose in the war. ISIS is fighting Bashar al-Assad and, of course, Syria. Assad is the brutal dictator that holds power in Syria. He's done terrible things to his people. And by fighting ISIS, we're, of course, helping Assad by fighting ISIS for him. And we're defending this group of rebels we trained against Al Nusra Front, which is part of Al Qaeda. Al Nusra Front is yet another rebel group fighting Assad. So yet again, we're doing some of the dirty work for Assad. But then we want to fight Assad by at first arming the supposedly moderate rebels in the region, and of course now by training this new group of rebels, and now we even fight Assad's forces if they attack our group of rebels. And don't forget, you have all these rebels fighting each other at the exact same time. The moderate rebels, yeah, they're fighting the more extreme ones, and obviously al Nusra and ISIS, but then certain factions of the moderate rebels, they have alliances with al Nusra and ISIS. It's a huge, huge mess. It's a civil war. The country is falling apart. So it begs the question, why does the U.S. expect to piece it back together? Okay, man, as I said, American foreign policy is simply a way for military companies to get rich. It's a complete waste of time and money, especially when these people have no idea what in the world they're doing. It's laughable. You're really fighting on both sides of a war. Really. They have absolutely no idea what they're doing. That's simple. We've gotten involved in similar situations in the past, many of them. Take Afghanistan. We armed the Mujahideen, which was an openly Islamic extremist organization, but it was fighting the Soviet Union. And we're peeing our pants over here because of communism, and this is the 1980s, the time of the Cold War. So we give this crazy group of Islamic extremists weapons to fight the communists of the Soviet Union. And surprise, surprise, when they gain control of Afghanistan, they use our weapons to become the Al-Qaeda and Taliban that we know and love today. Look at Iraq. We make up a bunch of BS about their leader as an excuse to enter the country, then we kill 200,000 innocent people and kill the main source of stability in the region, Saddam Hussein, and therefore create the open fields that ISIS needed. Not to mention, we leave behind our weapons free for ISIS to use. Our foreign policy is a joke. It's an absolute joke. Listen, I understand. You want to take out the bad guys. I, I understand that. But there's a lot of freaking bad guys around the world. If your goal is to take out the bad guys and be the global force for good that you guys proclaim yourselves to be, you're going to have to invade virtually every, uh, every country around the world. But no, their goal is not to be the global force for good. It's, as I said, to protect corporate interests. Why is it that nearly every major war we've fought over the last 20 years is in the Middle East, which is the oil heartland of the world? Because the fossil fuel companies, they can swoop in and they can make a bunch of money. Now you might say, well, uh, Middle East is the most chaotic region of the world, so we want to save the day there, right? True, true. But let's look at the situations that we ignore so that companies can make money. And that'll prove my point, okay? Saudi Arabia, they're in the Middle East, and there are oil sugar daddies. Okay? They're oil sugar daddies. So you know what? When they behead dozens of people for no reason inside the Sharia law system, we ignore it because we're counting our barrels of oil from them on the side. Do not. It is a country that we just allowed into the TPP, which is Obama's evil trade deal. <laughs> they just implemented a version of Sharia law. Okay, okay. But I thought you were against that ideology, right? I thought you wanted to take out the bad guys. Or Malaysia, where they just let slavery, they let literal slavery run rampant. And Obama just pulled this, this sleazy backdoor move to allow them in the TPP. 
It's all about the money. It has nothing to do with fighting the bad guys and running democracy or any of that nonsense. It's about money. And when you do foreign policy moves like this, fighting on both sides of a complicated civil war, it shows me your true colors. You're looking for chaos. So the companies that got you in office can make money. That simple.